Well, I, I, I think these are exciting times for um, Indiana baseball and, and really the community of Bloomington at large. And, and, uh, and I don't know if you've seen yet, and, and, and exciting times for a variety of reasons. We had actually some news today of our uh, couple, well, four All-Americans represented in the Louisville Slugger, Kyle Schwarber and Sam Travis, uh, second team, and Joey Donato and uh, Dustin DeMuth, uh, third team that was announced this morning, just found out this morning, so I thought that was newsworthy. But really the reason everybody's here is, is, is certainly the NCAA tournament and the chase for a national championship. And, and uh, when I said the excitement about Bloomington at large, I think we're tremendously excited because of being able to, to host and potentially, and there's a lot of baseball left to play, but potentially you know, host beyond, beyond the regional. And um, not that that's going to happen. We hope that it happens. But to put ourselves in this position, when you think about, you know, playing in the days of the old Simbauer Field and to be able to, to, to host a regional with the quality opponents that we have coming in, uh, we're proud on a lot of levels, not just for our baseball program, but for our university so that people get to see around the country um, that there's baseball played in Bloomington, Indiana. So with that, we'll open with. I just want to ask first, Joe, are you pitching tomorrow? Do you know that yet? Um, I do not know yet. All right, I'm just asking general fellows, just what's, what's different this time around, basically getting into this a second time? What's, you know, how much difference does it feel having been here already? So I couldn't really hear the question, sorry. Yeah, how much different is it just having been here already once, been in this tournament once? What's, this, what's the feeling like now that you've, you've done this one time through? Oh, okay. Um, well, I mean, all year is our expectation to uh, host a regional, and you know, it was one of our goals to uh, be a national seed. So, uh, I mean, because this was our expectation, we're just gonna, you know, handle it like it was any other game. I mean, I know there's more importance to it, but we're gonna have to keep the same mentality and the same drive each game. Brad, sorry, Brad, this is for you. Um, just. What are the keys? What, what needs to happen both tomorrow and, and, and this weekend to, to enable you guys to, to win in advance? Uh, I think we just got to keep playing the way we've played all year hard, take care of the baseball, get a good quality start in pitching like we've gotten all season, and just stay uh, with our approach, not get out of ourselves because it's a regional game or playoffs, just same way we've played all year, and I think uh, we'll be in good shape. Dustin, you talked earlier this week about a regional being tricky because of just the way it lays out and you don't know exactly who you're going to play. I guess how, how different is this weekend from another weekend where you just face a three-game series because you are constantly kind of in adaptation mode to figuring out what's next and who's next? Yeah, you know, it's a little different because you don't uh, play the same team every time. You know, three-game series on the weekends and you're playing the same team, you kind of get a feel with what the lineup has and what they can do and stuff like that. So. Um, it's a little tough uh, with a regional setup just because you don't know exactly who you're going to play, what they can do, and you haven't faced them at all yet. So, uh, yeah, it's just a little different. Uh, that being said, what have you guys learned, I guess, about Youngstown State? What have you seen? Um, I guess, what do they present that you guys have seen? I uh, haven't really learned much about them, you know. Uh, just kind of trying to focus on ourselves and just focus on our game plan and do what we do. And, you know, we think if, if we play good baseball, we can play with anyone in the country. Anything else from the players? This is a question for any of you, but uh, it's not, um, it's kind of easy to look past Youngstown State, you know, 16 and 36 record, but. Uh, what are, you guys, what are you guys doing kind of as leaders of the team to make sure your team is still focused at where it needs to be? Um, I mean, for us, I mean, at this point, point in the season, every single game is going to be important no matter what the record of the team um, is that we're playing. So, I mean, we're going to approach it. We're going to approach this game just like any other game, whether it's conference play, playoffs, or the College World Series. It's going to be, it's going to be the same team going out there. What, what are the, I guess, the lessons you learned specifically from, you know, playing Valparaiso last year, I guess, in, in relation to that, that, you know, any team can beat you at any point in time? Yeah, I mean, that's just how baseball is. Um, baseball is a game where any team could beat any team, no matter what the record is or, or how deep 
their lineup is. Um, that's, I mean, that's just the way it is. So. Who's starting tomorrow? You know, well, I laugh because I, uh, yeah, that was the over under and it happened. Here, here's the thing. I mean, we're, we're purposely, you know, I, I think you guys know me well enough by now. We, we typically don't play games with the lineup and things like that and deliberately hold information. And I would say that again in this scenario. I think what's different, what makes this t time of the year different, is, well, uh, let me answer your question. Right now, we're not sure. Um, but, and here's why, because what makes this type, time of the year different is, is you know, every decision moving forward is critical. You try to put yourself in the best position to win the weekend. And right now, the only team that we really have any sense of um, having played them was Indiana State. You can go over all the scouting reports you want. You can go over um, you know, all the video. But until, to me, you see the guys in person, you, you, you watch the swings yourself, it's hard for me personally to make a matchup decision. So the luxury of playing the second game is that it gives us time to evaluate uh, you know, the other two opponents. And I'm not saying we're in a position where we can, you know, I guess the baseball term, throw off um, with Joey Donato. Right now we're preparing as uh, really, to me, four options of guys that we would consider starting in Donato, Bell, Cordy, and Efros. We'll wait and make a decision um, you know, once we kind of see maybe who potentially we could be facing, taking nothing for granted with the, the Youngstown, because I, I, I'm still, we got to win game number one. And, and if it gets down to, you know, a situation where we see that, hey, we're going to keep things status quo, then we're going to run Donato out there. If we see that maybe we, uh, the second round opponent potentially could have a tougher matchup with a lefty, we may consider one of the two right-handers. So, you know, I, I wouldn't anticipate making a um, for go, you know, a, a uh, go decision on that until realistically sometime tomorrow. The charge for me has been to, to Coach Higlin is to make sure all those guys that I have just mentioned are mentally ready to go. Um, it may seem a little unorthodox, but if you guys have followed our team, I mean, outside of Donato, uh, you know, we pulled guys in the first inning, second inning, third inning um, quite frequently because we feel like the depth of our pitching staff is important. We're hoping that is, is key, and we're hoping that that's going to be a factor in this tournament in our favor. So we'll make that decision uh, probably sometime tomorrow. I promise you'll know before the first pitch. I guess if, if you do go with Evan Bell with Scott Efros, would it be something similar to last weekend in Omaha where you wouldn't be expecting those guys barring just totally cruising to be going – Six, seven innings, would it be something where you'd, you'd want to almost limit their innings, especially Efros, to maybe have him back for Sunday? Yeah, but if you look at the way that things have shaped up for us, um, it, it, not, not, I, I don't look at it. I mean, I'd love to get five out of a starter. Um, and, but, I, but we're going to take it seriously, and I know this sounds silly. We're going to take it one inning at a time. And because the depth that we have in the pen, it, we've been playing matchups pretty much outside of Donato's Outside of Joey's game, um, the games that he's pitched in, Morris has been stronger down the stretch. But other than that, we've just been kind of playing matchups and getting a guy one or two times through the order. We'll just have to see, you know, how that goes. But our focus is to try to win game one using the least amount of pitching as possible. And um, that's how we're going to play it. Just what brought Efros into the discussion? Obviously, he's a guy that's got some endurance, but what made you get started? Well, I think that? what brought him into the discussion was that we played four games last weekend, four times nine, 20 something, 36. 36 innings of baseball, and he pitched, you know, and I'm sitting here saying, you know, my goodness, this is one of the top arms in the country, and we, you know, didn't use him, so I think he has to be in the discussion on that because of the emergence of what. You know, Jake Kelzer has done out of the pen. Um, you know, but whether, I, sometimes guys are different guys in the starters' roles, so that's, you know, I, I just don't know yet. But that's why he's in the discussion for sure, is that that guy threw, you know, threw an inning or so in 30 some innings of baseball, and that's, I mean, I'm glad we won, but.
kind of unusual. What's the update on Corte? So, you know, and that's, you know, going back to the whole question is he's, he's kind of, he's day to day with the, he, you know, a slight, uh, some, just some discomfort in his arm. He's been throwing, um, you know, he's been throwing his bullpens, he's been preparing again, but it's just, we're going day to day with him to see how he feels. And um, that's probably why we're in a little bit of the position we're in right now as well. But he's, you know, we'll, we'll know more tomorrow based on the medical stuff of when he can, uh, um, he cranked it up on a bullpen the other day full speed and looked pretty good. We just want to see how he's responded to that. What do you know right now about Youngstown and, and is it a pretty balanced uh, lefty-righty lineup that you see? Um, the, the, the thing that I know is that they're, they're hot. I mean, anytime you win four games in a row and there's some quality opponents, um, you know, in the horizon league when they got to the championship rounds. But obviously they're playing good baseball. And, and I think that more so than anything because I've said it a lot about baseball, you can be good, but this is the one sport that it doesn't matter that if you're physically bigger than the other opponent or you're, you're, uh, you outsize them or outstrength them, it takes one guy. And we saw it last year in the regional. It takes one guy that can quiet down, you know, 4,000 people, 5,000 people, and that's the guy on the mound. And then even you can do everything right. You know, we've been kind of identified uh, by our offense. You can do everything right, ball leaves the bat, and still go to somebody. Um, so from our perspective, we're not taking, you know, anything for granted. I, you know, the righty-lefty stuff, all that stuff, I'm not worried about that. We're going to try to play as well as we can. They're going to come out just like we've uh, faced every opponent this year. You know, with our run to the World Series last year, we know we're going to get everybody's best effort. Um, but I, I, I guess, you know, I'm not, I'm not worried about, I don't mean this, I'm not worried about them. I'm not worried about Indiana State. I'm not worried about Stanford. I'm worried about Indiana University. And so our focus and preparation has been more on what we're doing. And uh, because I, I've said the message to our team is I don't care who we're playing of the three opponents here. It does not matter what records are. It doesn't matter anything we got to take care of our business because everybody's good or they wouldn't be here. Coach, you were talking about, or I was just curious, I mean, you've been here before, hosted the regional before. You just talk about how important it is for these guys to be able to, I don't know, keep a regular routine, sleep in their own beds, and all of that. Well, you know, I, I – It'll be, yeah, it'll be interesting because I think the expectations this year versus last year are a little bit different. But I would tell you, I think there's a, you know, it is kind of, there's advantages, honestly, to both. There's advantages to being home because you said you sleep in your own bed. You can, you know, kind of unwind a little bit and, and, and sit around your house and watch uh, television in the comfort of a living room. But there's also advantages to being on the road because you've got everybody, you know, confined to a hotel. Um, but our, I, I feel like we're blessed because we have a, a veteran group that these guys are in a nice, relaxed state right now. And, and, you know, whether we go, you know, out and win this thing or we don't win this thing, I still believe that these guys are going to play very mature baseball, do the best they can, and not let any of this stuff, environment, being home, being on the road, big crowd, small crowd, uh, affect them. It's just not this group has handled that stuff all year. So... But I like the fact you're at home because I can uh, hit some nice restaurants in Bloomington that I'm familiar with. So, somebody. In. A question about um, uh, if you do go with Efros tomorrow, it seems like this whole season it's been Kelzer, Efros, 1 2, in some order in the bullpen. If he does go tomorrow and he pitches three, four, or five innings and is not available for a day or two, who are some other guys you're looking at in the bullpen to go along with Kelzer? Well, I mean, you know, Luke Harrison's been a guy that we've been leaning on quite heavily. Um, we, we still feel like we need to have a better uh, situation of a left-hander uh, left coming out of the pen. Um, I think Sully Stadler, you know, could be that guy. Um, you know, Efros is a guy, too. Well, I guess you said if he starts, but I'm saying Efros is a guy, too, that bounces back extremely well. I mean, to me, when he's thrown well, he's thrown two and three times a weekend. So there's plenty of, you know, Thomas Belcher. You know, I look at the same deal. That guy was a, you know, he's got a sub two ERA, I believe, and we pitched him two thirds of an or one and one and a third inning last weekend. So those guys are all capable. 
Um, and we're just, I, I'm a cliche man, but we're going to go one game at a time. If, if whomever that first game starter is, I would love to get, you know, five out of them and, and put it together from there. But if, if they're not on, we'll get them out in a hurry. If they're cruising, we'll probably leave them in. Tracy, I know you've addressed this a little bit before, but the, despite the fact you had two significant pitching injuries, your staff doesn't seem to have missed a beat. Um, can you talk about that, how you were able to address that, how you got the staff where, where it is right now, despite those injuries? Well, I, I, I said coming at the end of last year, tail end of last year, that we had some pretty good guys that we redshirted that, that didn't get a lot of time last year that are going to be pretty significant. But I'd be lying to you if I would say that I'd be sitting here right now today thinking our staff would be in the top 10 or whatever it is in the country, ERA. Um, I give a lot of credit to, to Brandon Higlin, our pitching coach, for what he's been able to do with these guys. I think we're much better across the board. Uh, there's a lot of depth on our staff of being able to throw their off-speed stuff for strikes consistently. And when you get a, a staff load of guys doing that, uh, it gives us a lot of options. I should probably give a lot of credit to the guy that was sitting right here because if you're a young guy on this staff and you can watch a Joey Donato go out game in and game out with the demeanor and presence that he has, you're an absolute idiot or a fool if you don't pick something up from him. So I think it's a combination of those things. But I'm going to go back to, again, the very first question. The reason that, that we're kind of in this position, and I know it doesn't help your jobs any because everybody wants to get the scoop on who's starting. You know, for us to have that depth that allows us to have this type of discussion or question and answer session, because we got a lot of options. And, and we're just going to wait until we have a little bit more information before we choose the option that we feel gives us the best chance to win tomorrow. But uh, good kids and good coaching by Coach Higlin and, um, and some good leadership by the, the upperclassmen on our team. Kind of a more general question, but we've asked these guys a lot, what's different about this year, what's di what feels different, what looks different, just this whole experience. For you, observing them through the last week, what is different about the way this team is approaching this postseason as opposed to maybe the way it did last postseason? I'm trying. I'm, I always speak in analogies, and I can't come up with a good one. But, I mean, you think about anything in your lives where you've you had a goal and – you kind of get to that goal one time, and then you have a chance to repeat to go back through that same experience. You you have a different mindset. I mean, whether it be write your first article as a writer the first time it was done, you wrote it, and you got your feedback on it, maybe it wasn't quite the way it should be, and then you get a second shot at it, I can promise you, you're going to have a different attitude about it. And that's kind of where our guys are. I think last year we just kind of went through this thing. You know, the whole thing to Omaha, and I've said it a million times, it happened so fast. It's like we didn't get to enjoy it. We didn't really even get to, to fear or doubt ourselves because it just happened so fast. I think this group, having gone through that, now there's, there's no doubt, there's no fear, there's no, you know, we want to enjoy this one. And I, that's what I said to them is I said, regardless of what happens, let's make sure we enjoy this because I don't think we really got to enjoy it last year until it was the middle of the summer. But let's enjoy the experience. But this is a very, very focused group on um, – they want to win a national championship, and, and, and it's not just words. I watch how they, they, win, they win conference championships, and you'd think that they just got swept three games by the way they are in the locker room. Their mind is on one thing, and I think that is a result of how the, what we did last year is that it's real, it's tangible, it's not just some thing you throw up on a wall and tell recruits. This is something we can really do, and the guys genuinely really, really believe that. I guess just kind of adding on to that, what um – What's different about these guys specifically this week? I mean, can you, if you think back to, to you know, a year ago when it was the first time you guys were ever hosting this thing, what were they, you know, like just mentally going into that first game, and how are they different today? Uh, I think like last year there was this feeling of we really want to impress. You know, we've never hosted a regional before. We really want to impress Hoosier Nation and, quite frankly, the NCA and the polls. We want to show them that they made a good decision allowing to host. This group, that's not even on their radar. They're like – we don't care what anybody else thinks. We just we, we want to win. We want to have fun, and we want to go out and win. Very, just a mature, and I'm blessed to have Schwarber, Travis, DeMuth, all, you know, Donato, those guys, because I don't have to do much. It's, it's their team, and they've done a really good job of, of setting the, the, the mood for this team. But I'd say most of them were golfing and fishing this week, mixing in some bullpens and batting practice.